In the middle of the North Sea, hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest land, a group of European countries are planning to build a series of brand new islands, vast structures rising from the waves. But for what purpose and why now? That we want to make the North Sea a green power plant. And then we work together, we are capable of, uh, of so much. So we thought maybe we need to build an island. <laughs> For centuries, the North Sea has served as both a protective moat and dividing line, separating the British Isles from mainland Europe. Between the 8th and 11th centuries, the Vikings used it as their primary highway for raiding and conquering Northern Europe. In the centuries that followed, it became a pivotal arena, from the Hanseatic League's trading empires to the Anglo-Dutch Wars and Napoleonic campaigns. During both world wars, it was fiercely contested by the British and German navies for control over vital trade routes. And in more recent times, its depths have revealed vast reserves of oil and natural gas, flooding wealth into the nations that border it. But now, in the 21st century, the North Sea has a new source of value. It is one of the windiest regions on the planet, with average wind speeds exceeding 10 meters per second at 100 meters above sea level. It's also relatively shallow, making it ideal for anchoring massive wind turbine foundations to the seabed. And perhaps most importantly, it sits beside one of the largest electricity consuming markets in the world. Because of this, the North Sea has been hailed as Europe's next green power plant. Starting in the 2000s, offshore wind farms began rising along its coasts, first in the UK, then across Denmark, the Netherlands, Germany, and Norway. But as each country expanded its offshore network, it had to lay down its own transmission lines, converter platforms, and export cables. The seabed was becoming increasingly crowded and the grid became congested. Worse still, when one country's turbines produced more power than its grid could handle, the excess had to be shut off, even if a neighbor needed the energy. In short, the North Sea was full of wind, but still divided by borders. That's why on March 23, 2017, in Brussels, Belgium, Dutch and German national grid operator Tenet and Danish national transmission operator EnergyNet announced the North Sea Wind Power Hub Consortium, a plan to build a series of interconnected energy islands in the middle of the North Sea that would serve as a central hub for collecting and distributing offshore wind to multiple European countries. The idea? By centralizing production and distribution, the shared hub would reduce redundancy, lower infrastructure costs, and ensure that all excess energy produced would have a market to supply. Several months later, in September 2017, Dutch gas infrastructure company Gasuni joined the consortium. In November, the port of Rotterdam joined. And soon, the project won support from the European Union as part of its broader climate and energy goals, winning 13.6 million euros in 2020 as part of the Connecting Europe Facility program. Over the following years, the consortium released numerous studies examining cost, technical design, system integration, and regulatory frameworks, all of which they summarized in a dissemination report released in 2024. In the end, their conclusion was clear. Cooperation beats isolation. One connected network shared by all would deliver more power at lower cost and with fewer environmental impacts than any nation could ever achieve alone. When first proposed in 2017, the North Sea Wind Power Hub plan centered on a single, massive, six-square-kilometer artificial island built on the Dogger Bank, a shallow plateau in the middle of the North Sea. The island would host converter stations, maintenance spaces, and hydrogen facilities, collecting between 30 to 50 gigawatts of energy from thousands of nearby wind turbines 
which would then distribute to partner countries. However, as studies progressed, issues began to pop up. First of all, building a massive island 100 kilometers offshore in rough seas would have been extremely complex and expensive, taking numerous years and costing billions of euros, all before a single wind turbine could be connected. In addition, the transmission technology needed for such a large shared network was still emerging, and the onshore supply chains needed for construction were already stretched thin. Lastly, no single nation would have clear legal ownership or permitting authority over the island, making the project politically complicated. Still, the benefits of a shared network were clear, and by 2021, the consortium had adjusted its approach. Rather than building one large island, the new strategy was to build a series of smaller distributed wind energy hubs across the North Sea each within their own country's exclusive economic zone, forming an interconnected meshed grid. This new approach would be more flexible, cheaper to build, and easier to coordinate among nations, while still capturing the benefits of a shared system. Each hub would have a capacity of between 12 to 24 gigawatts. Some might be platform-based, while others may be small artificial islands. Each would collect high voltage alternating current electricity from surrounding wind farms, and then use a system of rectifiers, capacitors, and inductors to convert this into high voltage direct current, which is more efficient to transmit over long distances. This electricity would then be transmitted to the mainland and other hubs via two gigawatt high voltage direct current cables. In addition, the network would include offshore electrolysis plants which would absorb excess energy to produce green hydrogen that could then be transported to the mainland via underwater pipelines, where it would serve as seasonal green energy storage and to fuel hard to decarbonize sectors like steelmaking, refining, chemical plants, aviation, and shipping. Together, this integrated system of electricity and hydrogen wouldn't just stabilize the grid, it would redefine how energy is produced stored, and shared across Europe. And the benefits could be enormous. One study found that a 170 gigawatt hub and spoke system could save around 1 billion euros every year and reduce onshore landing capacity by 24% compared to a traditional country by country grid. This would also mean a smaller seabed footprint and less disruption to marine habitats helping protect the environment. And while transforming our energy system is vital, it's not enough. Forests are disappearing, species are vanishing, and oceans are struggling to recover. That's where Planet Wild steps in. They're a community-based organization with over 14,000 members, who every month fund a nature conservation project to bring back endangered species, protect our oceans, or restore forests. Think of it like crowdfunding for nature. They also have an amazing app and document all their projects and video reports that you can find right here on YouTube. I love spending time in nature, so I recently became a member, and I can say it's truly inspiring to see the impact. For example, in their recent project, they used our contributions to help restore a green desert into a thriving ecosystem. It was incredible. So if you want to join me and a growing community to make a difference in nature, please consider joining Planet Wild. You can give whatever amount feels right to you. And the best part, the first 100 people to sign up using my code FUTUROLOGY10 will get their first month paid for by me. Just scan this QR code or click the link in the description. And don't worry, you can cancel any time. If you want to see Planet Wild in action, check out their video around transforming a green desert. Thank you, Planet Wild. And now, back to the video. In addition to minimizing environmental impact, the North Sea Wind Power Hub would increase the amount of energy that's used rather than shut off, which would reduce dispatchable fossil fuel use, lowering power sector CO2 emissions by 4% across Europe by 2040. Furthermore, the project would help European countries 
reach their clean energy targets. On May 18th, 2022, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium signed the Espier Declaration with the intent of transforming the North Sea into a green power plant by installing at least 65 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030 and 150 gigawatts by 2050. And a year later, on April 24, 2023, they were joined by France, Ireland, Luxembourg, Norway, and the United Kingdom in signing the Ostend Agreement, an even more ambitious initiative to establish 120 gigawatts of offshore wind in the North Sea by 2030 and 300 gigawatts by 2050. The North Sea Wind Power Hub would contribute directly to these initiatives, as well as to even larger targets as part of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. Moreover, by facilitating cooperation, the project would boost international ties and strengthen Europe's energy security, allowing cross-border energy trade and increasing resilience to external supply chain shifts. Lastly, the project would drive massive supply chain growth, supporting tens of thousands of jobs in cable manufacturing, turbine installation, and hydrogen logistics in coastal communities and ports across Northern Europe. However, while all of this sounds great on paper, the project will take lots of time, money, and political will. So where does it stand today? After eight years of research, the North Sea Wind Power Hub Consortium has continued to publish new technical feasibility studies and has begun engaging with national governments and regulators to secure policy alignment, permits, and investment frameworks. Their immediate goal is to establish the first hub in the early 2030s, likely between Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands, serving as a proof of concept for the network to follow. And by 2050, it envisions numerous interconnected hubs forming a complete, meshed, hybrid offshore grid with a capacity of 170 gigawatts, accounting for up to one-third of all new European transmission capacity. Still, challenges remain. While European countries have agreed on the importance of expanding offshore wind, turning that ambition into reality will mean aligning legal frameworks, grid codes, and financing across jurisdictions, a process that could take years of negotiation. Yet if they succeed, the transformation would be historic. What is now a cold, rough sea that has divided nations for centuries would become a bridge, uniting nations through a shared effort to deliver affordable, clean energy and fight climate change. Please remember to check out Planet Wild through the link in the description or this QR code. You'll join a community who is leaving a positive impact on nature. And if you want to see them in action, check out their video about restoring a green desert. If you enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you like and subscribe to Futurology and share this video with someone who you think would find it fascinating. Thank you for watching and see you next time.